Greetings friends and welcome to Let's Make a Tower Defense Part 5. So, last time we were here we made ourselves some cool towers. But in this video we're going to go over how to make a tower builder. Because really one of the, one of the key elements of a tower defense is actually placing your towers and being able to choose where they will be and using strategy and so on and so forth around the actual placement of the towers because otherwise the towers would kind of be predetermined locations, which is not really what we want. We want to give the, the player the actual ability to choose where the towers will be. And so that's why we're gonna make ourselves a tower builder today. It is quite a detailed and complex um, uh, piece of logic in a tower building sort of system. I like to call them kind of tower nodes. So make sure to stick along and try and keep as close to what I'm doing as possible. But as always, we'll take it nice and slow, keep it nice and simple, and I'll explain everything that I'm doing as I do it. So yeah, without further ado, let's get stuck in, friends. Woohoo! Alrighty, friends. So the first thing we're going to do is actually build our tower node and uh, make a physical sculpture for it. You don't actually have to have like any kind of physical representation of it. You can just have it as like a trigger zone that when they walk into it, it'll give them the options to build and, and that sort of a thing. And um, for now, I think we're, we're actually going to give ourselves a physical sculpture so that uh, when we make our little builder, they can actually be walking on it and being like, okay, cool, I'm now in the zone and I can physically see where the zone starts and stops and ends and so on and so forth. You can make it, you know, you can, the, the size of it doesn't really matter. That really depends on how big you want to make it. You can make it disappear when a tower is built or you can make it stay behind so that it's kind of like a tower base. Uh, you can change the color of it if you like. You can make it maybe like a black sort of a color. Increase the tint amount. This is also a tip if you want to change the color of sculptures afterwards. So you can just have sort of like a node here. If you want to make it like futuristic, you can do all sorts of glowy business on here. You know what I mean? But yeah, really, depends on you. Alrighty, then let's stick down our first little microchip. We remember that where that is in logic and processing. And we're going to surface snap it to our to our tower node sculpture. Then in it, we're going to rename this to tower node, or you can call it tower builder, or really whatever. Let's call it tower build building node. Whoops. So this way, there's no confusion whatsoever. Alrighty, and this is going to be where all our business is done. All righty. So the first thing that we're going to do with our tower building node is we're actually going to put down a trigger zone so we can go into gadgets. We can close the signal manipulator or you know the logic and processing, whatever we have. Go to sensors and input. Then we're going to go to trigger zone. We can scope into our trigger zone into its tweak menu, and we can reduce this. The size of it, the circle's good, or the um, the sphere rather is good. You want to make it so that it's kind of on the area of the of the node. Might take a little bit of looking at it from all angles, so that when our little person comes here, then they are actually in here, and they can sort of interact with it. But this now begs the question, what am I talking about when I'm speaking of our little person? Well, we're actually going to make ourselves a little builder now, which will be the person who goes around and actually builds the towers. So I'm going to actually just make a very simple dude, go into gameplay gear. We're going to go blank puppet collection. We're going to go choose this little platforming puppet, the sliding platforming puppet, because they're nice and cute and yeah, small and, and that sort of a thing. And this is actually going to be our builder. So if you want to add like some fancy bells and whistles to this character you must absolutely go for it but I think we'll keep it simple for now one thing you're going to want to do is go into sensors input tag and on this tag or rather the name of this tag is going to be changed to builder or you can call it player or really whatever you want and of course the tower building node is going to detect things to detect tag name to detect down on the d-pad not baddie builder alrighty so when the tower has detected ooh, when the tower has detected that the builder is in the zone something is going to happen and that thing that is going to happen 
is that it is going to trigger a eh, selector. So we're going to go selector and we're going to wire it to input B. So there's input B and, and output B. So this is going to be, uh, we're going to leave A blank because what happens in A is that nothing is happening. So when we're on A, everything is good, nothing is happening, you'll carry on as normal. But when your builder enters into the zone, then it's going to trigger the output B. Now what we're going to do for output B is actually create our little text menu, which is going to be the menu where you select the tile that you want to build. So for that, we're going to go into gadgets, we're going to go into movers and outputs, we're going to go to text display with a nice little bubble there, and we're going to connect it to output B. But make sure, don't put it in the start text, we want it to be in the power. Alrighty, why do we do that? So that this is only powered when it's when you're in the trigger zone. So when you move outside the trigger zone, it's going to disappear. Otherwise, if you put it in start text, what's going to happen is it's going to be triggered and then it's going to go back to, it's going to kind of remain there as you run around the map. This text is going to be stuck in your screen. You're going to be like, ah, oh, what's happening? So you want it to actually disappear. But let's carry on with our making of our menu. So in our menu, we're going to have select tower, just, just those words. And then we're going to go to text box properties. We're going to go to auto fit. I'm going to untick that or turn it off. And as you can see, we've got a nice chunky one. I think it's a good idea to move it to the right. So we shall move that chap to the right. Then we're going to go alignment, vertical alignment, and we're going to set this to top. So now we've got select tower. It looks like a nice heading. And you can change the size of this, whatever works for you. You can make it a bit longer. So it's going to be select tower. And if you want to change the font of that, you can do that here. Also in text properties and just, you know, make it a bit more bold or whatever you want. Uh, change the color, you know, you know, anything really. And this will be our, this will be our select tower menu. Alrighty. So now if our friend walks into this circle, it's going to say select tower, but if I leave it, alas, this menu is still here, which is really annoying. So the way that we fix that is we're going to make this slightly bigger. We're going to move our trigger zone a little bit this way. And we're going to use the glorious, the fabulous, the fantastical. <laughs> we're going to not. That's what we're going to use. We're going to use the not gate. Sorry. I started strong, but ended badly. Okay. So we're going to use the not gate, which is in logic and processing. So we'll select this not gate. And the way that this logic is going to work, when the builder detected, right? So this detects the builder. When the builder is not detected, it'll put us on A. So are we together? Do we see what's happening here? If your builder is not there, it's going to say A. And of course, we know when A is happening, nothing's happening. When the builder is detected, it's going to go to B. And we know when B is here, the menu is given, the tower building menu is given some power. And we can actually change this, the name of this text displayer to tower, tower build menu. It's also a good idea to name text displayers and that sort of a thing. So now we know that the tower build menu is powered when the, when the builder is there. So let's see if it works. So let's see, we're here and we leave and it's gone. We're here and it's gone. Hey. So you'll be like, okay, cool, I'm in the zone, I want to build a tower, shwang. So that is very simply how we're going to activate our menu. Woohoo! But of course now we want to actually add some, some, you know, options to this menu. So what we're going to do is, we're going to, we're going to copy this actually, the tower build menu. We're going to scope into it. We're going to remove the text box as in we're going to go show text box and set it to invisible we're going to remove the border we're going to remove the shadow then i'm going to change the text and call this arrow tower arrow tower <laughs> and then i'm going to turn on a quick grid snap and move this chap down ever so wow okay that's very large okay i'm going to reduce the size of the grid snap oh remember if you press l1 and up on the d-pad it will increase the size of the grid 
as I'm doing now, up and deeper, up and deeper. And if you go down, you will decrease the size of the grid snap. Alrighty. Let me reduce the size of this. Alrighty, let me move this down. Whoops. And now let's select them both. Whoops. Let's select them both. And we've got select tower, arrow tower. But we want the select tower to be kind of like the heading, so we'll reduce the size of that over there. Alrighty. And this is also going to be powered by output B. Then we can copy it just, just the exact same way. And we're going to go into it and we're going to call this one Canon Tower. Canon. Canon. Oh, I think there was an extra space there. Oh, look, Dreams automatically deleted it for me. Guys, this, this is amazing. Look at this. Okay, cool. So the next thing we're going to do is go power this. But we're just going to move it, of course. We're going to select all three of them so we can see what's happening. We're going to go into Cannon Tower. And, oh, actually, we can't select all three of them. Sorry. We're just going to go into Cannon Tower and we're going to go sideways a little bit, go down. And then we can see what's happening. So if we've got them all, then we might want to move cannon, down, cannon Tower down just a bit. And there you are. And this will also be powered by Output B. Then we can turn off our grid snap because we don't really need it anymore. Alrighty, friends. So that is the gist of making our little menu. Let's see if it works. So there we are. Select Tower, Arrow Tower, Cannon Tower when you're in the zone. If you jump out of it, it disappears. Woohoo! So let's get on to the next thing, which is actually making this menu usable. So in order to make this menu now usable, we're going to have to do a few things. The first is we're going to go into Gadgets, Sensors and Input, and add a controller sensor. First thing you can do is delete the connection between Circle and Depossess. And this controller sensor is going to be powered by Output B. So when you're in Output B, we're going to be able to control something. Let's go into controller sensor, important properties, <laughs> and set it to remote controllable. That allows you to your controls to do something even if you aren't possessing something. Because of course we're going to have this uh, dude over here. He's going to be possessed, but we're still going to be able to use this menu uh, even though we haven't possessed our node over here. So set it to remote controllable. Then we are going to create another selector. So we'll go into logic and processing. We're going to select another selector. <laughs> and for this selector, we're going to actually make some keyframes. And these keyframes, we're going to, I'm going to place one above. Remember, this is our arrow tower. The name of the text display isn't quite right because they're all called tower build menu at the, at the moment. But we can see if we hover over them what they are. So it's select tower menu, and then the arrow tower, and then the cannon tower. So with this keyframe, we're going to go in here and we're going to go to our arrow tower and we're going to change the text to, let's say, red. Maybe like a kind of a, a reddish color. You can really make it whatever. You can make it blue, you can make it green, you can make it anything really. Alrighty. And what does that do? That just shows that our option is actually selected. So... Let me go now to my controller sensor and I'll just have it here on the side. Now, in our selector, we're going to have A connected to nothing, B is going to be connected to this keyframe, and then in our selector, we're going to increase the, the number of ports to three, and C is going to go to another keyframe, and that keyframe is going to be very much like this. I'm actually just going to copy this keyframe, go into it, O1 and X. I'm going to deanimate this because of course we're not really interested in animating the arrow tower of text twice, but rather we're going to animate the cannon tower text. We're going to make it like a, like a blue, a bluish color. Oh, that's red. We're going to make it a bluish color as well. So what have I done? What madness have I undertaken? 
I have created a keyframe that changes the color of this text and a keyframe that changes the color of this text. Now I've got a selector. B is connected to this one, which highlights the arrow towers text. And C will be connected to this one, which highlights the cannon towers text. So it's kind of like when you select something in a menu, the option that you're currently on will be highlighted. That's essentially what I'm doing here. Then I'm going to go into controller input output page 3. Then I'm going to, where we've got up and down on the D-pad, I'm going to say down is going to go to next input and up is going to go to previous input. All right. Then you don't actually have to have A, B, and C. You can just have A and B so that you, at the moment, A is just selecting nothing. And B and C will be like these two. So let's see what happens when we actually press these things. So I, I go here, my trigger zone is detected, my select tower is here, I press down on the D-pad, an arrow tower is very subtly selected, and if I press down again, cannon tower is selected. So you can see there, I can actually make the, I can make the colors a bit more vibrant, so you can see what's happening. But I can now select these two, cha 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 alrighty. So, alrighty, that looks cool. So the next thing we're going to do is make it actually now like able to select one of those two because at the moment we're just highlighting them now i want to be able to okay cool i want to build an arrow tower or a cannon tower so the way we're going to do that is as follows we're going to go into gadgets we're going to go into movers and output then we're going to go to emitter and the emitter is going to be our thing that pops out a cannon tower Alrighty. so and an arrow tower and so on and so forth. So the first thing we want to pop out is actually an arrow tower. So we're just going to move this canvas quickly. Then we're going to go into the emitter and we're going to call this one. We're going to call this one arrow. Arrow spawn. So this is the emitter that will spawn the arrow tower. So the first thing we're going to do is actually change the emit speed to zero. We're going to change the time between emits to zero. We're going to change the emit mode to once. We're going to say max emitted, and we're going to set that to infinite. And that looks to be good. Then we're going to choose object to emit, and we're going to choose our arrow tower in all its glory. We're going to choose our white bauble here, and we're going to rotate it, and we're going to move it to on top of our, on top of our little node that we've got here. That it's like you build it and it appears to ching just like that. Alrighty, that looks pretty central. You can change the size of it. It doesn't affect the original, hey, if you change the size when it's emitted. So there, there you go. But we'll leave it. I'll actually just change the size of it there so that it's the original. And there we go. So that's going to emit the arrow tower onto there. But how are we going to make it actually emit with our menu? How, would, how do we get these things to work together? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go into logic and processing. And we're going to select an AND gate, which is this kind of the squarest of the squarest of these gates. Squarest looking one. And we're going to go when B is selected. And I'm going to make the, I'm going to make the build button square. You can make it X. Um, the only thing is X makes you jump and you can do a thing where when you go into this menu it will disable controls you can do that but it's it's a little bit more logic that you've got to add so if you want to keep it simple you create sort of like a an exclusive button just for building so in this in our game over here we're going to make square the build button so when you're selecting the arrow the arrow tower and you press press square oh sorry 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 made a mistake there you'll wire it into the B port. So when the arrow tower is highlighted and you press square, it is going to emit the arrow tower. I should call this arrow tower spawn really, but we, we know what we're talking about at the minute. So let's see if it works. As you can, as you can see, there's a hang of a lot of stuff going on. So I'm gonna press down on the D-pad, arrow tower is selected, and I'm gonna press square. And now we have an arrow tower. I think uh, I think the cannon tower is kicking a little bit too much ass. 
at the moment, so I'm just going to move it over here so that we can see that the arrow tower that we've spawned actually works. So let's see. We go arrow tower, we build it with square, and now it's here. But does it work? Is this merely a shell? Is this merely a shell of its, of its real self, or is it the real deal? Let's see. No, it's doing it. Ah, it's fighting for justice and the little chicky. Alrighty. So friends, there you are. We have created something that can spawn an arrow tower quite easily, quite simply. And to spawn a cannon tower, it's the exact same process. So we'll copy this AND gate. When C is highlighted and square is pushed, it's going to, and we can copy this arrow spawn as well, it's going to emit a cannon tower. Let's go over here. Let's call this cannon spawner now. Cannon spawner. And it's going to spawn a cannon. But we must remember, of course, to actually choose the object to emit. All the other settings are OK because we've copied it. But we must choose what we're going to emit. Let's choose our cannon. Well, that's not exactly the position we want it. So we're just going to move it around. We're just going to change it. We can change the size ever so slightly. Just be careful when changing size of emitted objects because the change, changing the size of stuff will do a lot. It will change their maximum range. In some senses, it will change the like the uh, the size of their their trigger zones and their ex sort of like if you've got a cannon, it'll reduce the size of the cannonball's explosion. All those things will be changed by size. So just be be careful when you change things size. You might need to reshuffle or rechange a few of the things there when you do that. Alrighty, and now we have something that can that can make a cannon arrow tower and a cannon tower. Press square to build. And we've got a working cannon tower. But does it work? That is the question. That is the question. Done. You see it's clipping a little bit. You see it's going through the, the node there a little bit. So you can really mess with that as you see fit. But now it's working perfectly. And now, friends, one thing I want to actually also show you, one last thing is if I build something here and I've got my arrow tower, whoops, I press X instead of square. If I go back here, I can build something else. Ah, you see, now I've got both. You see? So that's a little bit of a bug, a bit of a glitch. So what you're going to want to do is create, whoops, we're going to increase the size of this tower building node. Gadgets, selector. Output A is going to power this trigger zone. All right? But when we, when we have built something, we don't want to be able to build something again. So we're going to go to arrow spawn. And we're going to say, just object just emitted. So once it's emitted something, it's going to go to B, input B, at the very beginning. And the same thing for the cannon spawner. When it's just emitted its cannon tower, it's going to go to B. And when we get to B, nothing's going to happen. So it won't be able to see that you're nearby, and you won't be able to do any of these things or build anything again once you have built something once. So let's check. Let's build ourselves an arrow tower with square. And I'm going back. Ah, no, I want to build... I want to build a double tower and break the game. Nah, alas, you can't do it. Our, our bug fixing is too powerful. Alrighty, friends. And that is the gist of it. That is what a tower building node is made up of. As you can see, there's a whole lot going on here. Um, but really, well, now we know what's cracking. We have the trigger zone that detects when the builder is near. When the builder isn't near, nothing is happening. It's going to output A. When the builder is near, it's going to turn on our menu. And it's going to turn on our little controller sensor. Our controller sensor, when we press up and down, it's going to be selecting these things. And when it selects them, it's going to be highlighted with up and down. When these are selected and the build button, in our case square, has been pressed, it is going to emit an arrow tower. And then when we press down again and we select the cannon tower, so that one is selected here, and the build button is pressed, it's going to emit a cannon tower. Not only that, but when these have been built, either of them, it is going to go whoop, go to B, and when B is the, the, the B sort of output is selected, and this is a very beginning one, it is going to do nothing. So you won't be able to detect when the builder is there or anything. So once you have built something, the node kind of becomes just a, just a sculpture. It doesn't really do anything anymore. 
Otherwise, if we don't have this, it's going to allow people to build like bunches of towers. So now, friends, we can have some fun. It's a good idea to turn on a guides, grid snap, make it fairly large, something like two, press R1 and R2, and we can make some clones, go all the way to the end here, press left on the D-pad, and we can build now <laughs> a whole bunch of towers. Ooh, arrow tower, whoops, arrow tower. Here I want a cannon tower. Here I want another arrow tower. I think here I'll have uh, another cannon tower. Why is this chicky coming over here? Okay, I don't know. That's a bug we can fix in the next in the next video. But now we have our our glorious row of row of towers destroying our enemies. <laughs> but friends, there you are. That is that is all there is to it. So if you have any questions, if you have any comments, let please let me know. If this was helpful, please let me know as well. It was quite a bit, and I hope it all makes sense. I tried to be as slow and as methodical as possible. Um, this, this tower node works perfectly. You can copy this and place it all over your map to make you, um, to allow your players to position it in all sorts of different positions. You can change the size of it. Just, just be wary that when you change the size of it, it will reduce the, the like the range of your, um, your, your towers, and it will also reduce the size of the explosions and that sort of a thing, the size of their projectiles. So just be wary of that. But otherwise, this is a perfectly working tower node, and you'll be able to build a whole bunch of towers. And yeah, friends, thank you for sticking around. Please hit me up with those likes and subscribes if you enjoyed this and found it helpful. And yeah, peace out, friends. Thank mm -hmm. you.